If you want to get more students in 2024 without spending any money, you're going to want to watch this interview because I'm interviewing a client of mine who moved to a different state and filled up her private lesson studio in no time flat, like literally just a couple of months. And she did this without relying on paid ads. So if you're watching this video and you're a owner of a small music studio, you really should hear her story because too often I hear people say that they don't know what to do to get more students. And I just want to show how possible it is to get amazing results when you're willing to put in some good old-fashioned hard work. Additionally, if you're a music school owner, you own a big school, you have staff that works for you, things of that nature, I think this interview would be valuable for you because it's possible for you to unleash a staff member, maybe even uh, a part-time marketing assistant, with the power of the strategies that we're going to talk about here today in this interview. And they could be working to get you students for your school, no matter the size of your school. So that's what we're going to get into today. I'm Daniel from GreenMusicStudio.com, and right here I have Margie. Welcome, Margie. Tell us, who are you? Hi, my name is Margie Looney, and I own and operate a music school in Eagle Mountain, Utah. I teach violin, viola, and cello students from ages six and up. I stop at about 18. I don't do adults, but I love what I do, and I've been doing it a long time, and I'm so thankful to be able to do this as my full-time job. It's basically a dream come true. Mm, cool, cool, cool. So what really caused me to want to reach out to you? Because obviously you went through my marketing training. Wasn't it last year? Wasn't it 2022? Yes, it was just a little bit over a year ago. Okay. So Margie came to me, took the marketing training. And at the time, I think you lived in Texas, right? Yes. Yeah. And so then Margie kind of reached out to me and said, you know what? I'm done with Texas. I'm moving back to my home state. And, you know, this was after she completed the marketing training and she said, you know, will this work when I'm moving into a place where, you know, I have no students? And I said, yeah, everything you learned in the class previously, you're going to be able to just, you know, take those principles and start to get new students. You know, in my own mind at the time, I was, you know, crossing my fingers being like, oh man, you know, I really want the best for her. I know the material in the marketing training works and I hope that she's able to get you know, get some traction, get some students going. Then I follow up with her a few months later. She's got a full studio. And not only did she do what was in the marketing training, I think she really went above and beyond. And that's why I want to interview her because, and this is where I'm going to kind of go over to you, Margie. She sent me this document called ABH, Always Be Hustling. <laughs> okay. And she'd created this, I'd call it a game plan for how to get students in this new or, you know, students of the community where she was starting a studio basically from scratch. So where did you come up with the 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 idea for the Always Be Hustling document? I just have to know. It's just great. Okay, honestly, the idea slightly came from my brother. He's a big business owner. And I was telling him about my success. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're just always hustling. Just always hustling for those students. And I was like, yeah, I really am. It's a lot of work. But then I thought I've got to be more organized on exactly what I do each week in order to get more students. And so I made the ABH document to help me stay organized. Okay. So uh, maybe tell us a little bit about um, you know, what's on the document. Because obviously we're having the interview here and, you know, I mean, I could put it on screen if you cool with that. <laughs> Sure, we could put okay. it on the screen. All right, and maybe we can just kind of talk through some of the things that uh, are are on there, because we are gonna. Can you see that? Yes, I can. See okay, it. perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so first thing: eat, drink, sleep, and ABH life motto. Tell me about that. <laughs> well, in order to fully embrace ABH, you got to live it. You, I mean, when you are eating, you're thinking about this life motto. When you're drinking, when you're sleeping, when you're doing anything in your life, you have to subscribe to the ABH motto in order for it to work. You have to be okay. fully committed. Otherwise, I mean, you, you won't necessarily follow through with everything on the list if you're not really all in. What do you feel like you were fully committing to? Like, what was it in your mind? What was the commitment you were making? The commitment I was making was I had to build my studio and build my dream immediately because I quit my full-time job and I had no plan B. This was it. So in order to pay the bills, I, I had like, 
about a month and a half, um, you know, when I quit my job, my paycheck went, you know, so far and <clears throat> they paid me for sick days I had left over and that everything got me through like a month and a half after I initially said I'm no longer returning to this position. And so I had to make it work. I didn't want to tap into my savings. And so that's what made me commit was, here we go. I'm all in. That's cool. Okay. All right. So let's actually look through this. Um, and I'm just going to read these. Um, so post daily in the community Facebook group, organize field trips for community, uh, post on your studio's Facebook page at least two or three times a week, direct ask to parents to like, comment, and share the post featuring their child. Search violin and cello on Facebook community groups and respond to people inquiring about violin or cello lessons. Direct ask the parents to post my flyer on their Facebook group. So where did you come up with all these ideas? I mean, this is only a fraction of them. I think it was a conglomeration of just different things from the training, listening to different podcasts, listening to podcasts that you have, um, ideas that my brother's given me. Mm. Just... I mean, it's a conglomeration of a lot of thought and ideas Got it. from other okay. people that I've just taken. Uh, no, I totally get that. Now, when you when you made this, did you sit down and kind of come up with these all at once, or did you did did this happen over a period of time? Maybe maybe tell me a little bit about that. So the actual document has been something I've been creating over time. And I just add things to the list as I come up with new ideas. But the the ideas themselves have just slowly trickled in. <laughs> um, they All the ideas did not come at once. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, what of the, Which of these were, you know, quote unquote, the most effective? You know, because again, I read about 25% of them. Not even all of them are on the, on, on the screen right now. Which of these seem to do the trick or am I asking the wrong question here? Maybe you have a different perspective about how all this worked. That's a really good question. And I was actually thinking about that today. Like which of these has been the most successful? And I honestly think it's been posting daily into the community Facebook groups and then also really strengthening my Google business page. Mm. Those two things have gotten the bulk of my students. And I track where all my students come from, you know, whether it's Facebook or word of mouth, you know, how do they learn about me? And it's been those two items for the most part. Okay. I can hear, and I can already hear people who, uh, who are watching this video say, well, a couple things. First off, how are you able to post daily into into Facebook groups? A lot of these groups have rules that allow that disallow you to promote yourself that often. Like, can you maybe tell me a little bit about that? Did you break the rules? Did, was it a especially generous Facebook group? Like, what was that about? I'm not a rule breaker, so I haven't broken the rules. <laughs> um, so I just, I went into my community and where I live, there's kind of two communities next door that... A lot of people do different activities in both communities. And so I just went through Eagle Mountain and Saratoga Springs, Utah, and found all the applicable Facebook pages, and I rotate. So I have a, another document that lists what page I post to each day of the week. So like Monday, I post to this certain Eagle Mountain community page. Tuesday, I post to a different community page. Wednesday, it's a different one. So I'm posting daily to a community page, but it's not the same page. And I did that intentionally because I could have just posted on every page on one day. However, I wanted yeah. to have exposure daily. So yeah, that's a, a intentional move on my part. What are you actually posting in there? So I have a pre-created uh, just a little blip about my lesson program. Okay. And... I post my bullet points about my program. I mention that I'm filling up very quickly, that uh, the best way to get started is through free intro lesson. And and um, I put pictures on there, and that's really getting me a lot of students. But what the, where the magic comes from mm. is I have parents, all my parents are on those pages for the most part. 
And so when someone messages on my Facebook post, parents of my studio will inevitably see it. And then they all comment on that person's comment saying, Margie is amazing. I highly recommend In All Strings. This is the best place. If you want lessons in this area, you need to go there. My child loves their violin lessons. And so I am seeing that the social proof is really strong because of what my parents are posting to other people's comments. Okay. Wow. That actually is huge. And I think maybe a comment I would make about this would be that in your own area, maybe look at the kinds of groups that the parents in your studio are already a part of and use that and kind of reverse engineer where you would think to post. Or if you have an adult lesson studio and you're also doing local lessons, look at where the adults in your studio are. Now, Margie, that would actually imply something. Are you friends with the parents on Facebook? Like, are you like a Facebook friend to them? I'm friends with a large portion of them. Okay. But to be honest, my studio is growing so quickly that I just haven't thought about, oh, I need to add every single parent as a friend. Um, but a lot of them I, I am. However, because they're all members of this community page, they're all seeing the post. Okay. And so then they chime in. Are you tracking in any way? Are you tracking how many people are seeing the post and then coming to your, like I assume from the post, do you send them to your website or do you tell them to directly message you? Like what's the call to action from the post? So my call to action is really to book an intro lesson if they're interested. Okay. Um, but I also list my website and I list my cell phone number because that's my main source of contact. Okay. So I have three options for them, and most people will message me through Facebook Messenger. And then that's a way for me to kind of introduce a little bit more about my program. And then all, most of them just book an intro lesson from there. Okay. So, they, so just to be really clear, they book an intro lesson through Facebook or through your website? Well, they book an intro lesson multiple different ways. So I okay. send the direct link to book the intro lesson on my Facebook post. And then when they message me through Facebook Messenger, I send them another direct link. But on my website, I send them to the Get Started page. And then once they fill out the Get Started page, it takes them again to the link to book an intro lesson. So they're okay. kind of getting it from a lot of angles. Everyone listening should write that down. She's like making it very easy for them to contact her. It's like Messenger, it's the the web page, it's on the post itself. Like that's really, really smart. Okay, I love that. I'm going to maybe belabor the point just a little bit longer and ask you, are you doing any kind of direct messaging? Are Are you actively reaching out to people potentially or... You see people participating in groups and you're just trying to make friends all in the community. We didn't really talk about this before, but I'm just curious. Messages. Okay. If someone posts a comment on my post regarding my program, mm. I will comment on their comment, but then I will also direct message them. Nice. So Perfect. that way they've got it two different ways because on the comments, a lot of times they're like, what's your pricing? And I'm like, I don't really want to lay out my whole program on this post. I want that to be more of a one-on-one -on -one connection because my prices yeah. are not cheap. And people in this community are often used to spending, you know, a, a lot less than what I charge. But I have an, an extremely comprehensive program. It's much akin to what I did in public schools with an orchestra program. Okay. It's not just a once-a-week situation where high buy. I mean, it's really community driven and networked. So <clears throat> um that's really yeah, I, I just don't want to lay it all out on the yeah. post. And that's really smart. That's exactly what I do. So very very smart there. Question for you about uh the volume uh, in two different ways. So how much time do you think you were spending on this per week between July and now? Well it's hard to say because initially when I moved here, I had a full-time job mm. and the school year started in August. I was teaching orchestra at a school around in, in the community and I didn't have very much time to, you know, put 
posts on every fix Facebook page. I think I did one post a week on Mondays. And then when I quit my job right after Labor Day, I think I've been spending, oh gosh, just Facebook. If if you count the Facebook posts and the, the messaging with parents and going back and forth, I mean, several hours a week. I mean, it's definitely an investment of time, but what else am I doing? I, I don't have a full-time job. So right, yeah, yeah. use that time wisely to help me get students. So, I mean, yeah, it's definitely an investment, but it's paid off. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, actually, to be honest, a couple hours a week actually seems a little bit high. Like if you're only making a couple posts per week and then you're, you're messaging parents, are you really spending hours messaging parents every week? Well, it's a good question. So I have a lot of volume. I have a lot of parents reaching out okay. weekly uh, in all different forms, whether it's my cell phone. Uh, my website, my email. I mean, it's just a constant flow. So, and I'm very thoughtful because I really, really care about the relationships I build with the families I work with. I am very intentional about what I write, the message I send. I I have finally created a document of, you know, a quick response. I can just copy paste. If they have this question, here's my copy paste reply. Um, but that took me a little bit of time to get going. But I do have a lot of communication. So I I do invest a bit of time making sure that what I'm saying is what I want to say and then I'm thoughtful okay. about it. That's great. Okay. I know that you're selective about who you take. So even though you would be spending quite a bit of time doing this, you are weeding out people. And I I, I just make that point because... For someone who maybe is trying to build a larger school, you hear that, oh, a couple hours. Well, it's possible that if you know you weren't trying to be incredibly selective, maybe there would be more opportunity to enroll more for that time. I, I just kind of point that out um, just because people might hear that and be like, oh, a couple hours. Oh, that's too much. Oh, I, I hate making money. I, I don't want to spend several hours a week, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm being a little facetious there. But go ahead. You were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, I look at it as something you mentioned a while back in the marketing training. It, and it's like my two hours up front that I do each week may end up creating, you know, thousands of dollars this year and then in the lifetime of the student a lot more income and a wonderful treasured relationship that i have with that student and their family and so you know two hours here is well spent because i'm very new to the community while i have friends because i used to live um not too far away from here but i want to you know get my name out there and have people know who i am and what i stand for and that I just want to be networked. So to me, it's really worth it. And it, and it's really given some great results because the, the parents that I work with and the students that I have, they're all gold. I mean, they are the best of the best. They are amazing. And I'm I, if it takes two hours, I'm happy to spend that to get them. They're great. That's cool. That's cool. Would that, a couple hours per week that you mentioned, would that also include the work that you were doing on Google My Business? Or was that even additional to that other time? I don't spend a ton of time on Google My Business, to be honest. Okay. I hired someone a few weeks ago to do like a one-month touch-up on my Google Business page. Okay. And I followed all the different uh, tenets that you had us do on our page. And he said it was really strong. He just added some things and just tweaked a few things. And I don't know what he did, to be honest. I don't understand all that language. Sure. However, he did something magical because I have people contacting me. It is like nonstop. And so since he, since I hired him, it has just gone bananas. However, I do post, I try to post almost daily on that because I know Google likes it Yeah. for their algorithms and I don't spend very much time on it. Okay. What are you posting there? I post updates very regularly. I make sure my business hours are up to date and I add photos from time to time. However, Google's really tricky because if you add too many photos at once, they they suspend your page. Mm. 
Um, so that was something I really struggled with when I moved here was changing my address, changing my phone number. And, and I spent, oh my gosh, it was like a full-time job just getting my Google business page back up working. But now it is, and it's pretty strong. Good. That's cool. So there's a lot of other techniques that you put on your always be hustling document. Um, my hunch is that, I mean, I love that name. So my hunch is that you had these two core strategies that you did, but then you had other things where it was like direct outreach to parents at making asks of parents in your studio. You mentioned flyers to local music shops, flyers to local teachers, like things of that nature. I imagine that that didn't take much time. Do you feel like you got results? Did those things yield results for you or, or maybe you have a different perspective on it? I'm just curious. I think everything has brought in a little bit of results. You know, I've talked to the orchestra teachers in the area and I've gotten several students from them. Um, I put some flyers at the libraries. I've gotten one student from that. I have direct ask parents to post my flyer on their Facebook pages. And while I don't know if I've really gotten anyone from just that, um, it at least gets my name out there. So I think it it all works together. Yeah. I can't say there's one thing that contributed vastly to the success, but all of it together, you know, has made a big, pretty big difference. Yes, yes, for sure. And again, as you mentioned earlier, a lot of this stuff we talk about in the training. Uh, and then one of the focuses of the training is that all of this or none of this will work, depending on the quality of the offer, the quality of the the copywriting, the persuasion, how good the um, how good you are, the follow, like those sorts of things. And so, I think the fact that these are working for you speak to the fact that that you yourself are creating quality content, quality posts, quality copy. Because I I hear every single week I get on calls with people who are like, "Yeah, I post in Facebook groups for months and I didn't get a single bite from it." And it's just like, I look at the offer, I look at where they're sending people, I look at those sorts of things, and I can kind of understand why. And so when I hear, oh, that's great, you're doing the exact same thing, but you're actually getting results from it, and it's to the quality of what you're actually creating to put in those groups. So I have to commend you for that. Maybe, maybe I have one final question. Is there anything that looking back, you're like, you know, if I could fast forward, if I could rewind back to July and save some time. I tried this, but it really didn't work. Or maybe there's a series of things that you tried that didn't work. And you're like, you know what? I'm just not going to do that anymore. Maybe some things to avoid for people. I'm, I'm curious. That's a really good question. Or maybe there's nothing. Maybe it all just, I don't know. <laughs> I think what I would have done sooner is, first of all, created this document right off the bat of what I do so I can keep track of what I'm doing because I've learned real fast that when this is your full-time job, you know, you're running every little bit. And so you have your teacher hat, you have your business owner hat, and you've got your, you know, taking payments, taking tuitions, responding to parents, answering questions. There's so much. And so I think I've just would have created something a little bit sooner to help me be organized. But <clears throat> what I really, really enjoyed and what I wish I would have made right off the bat was my document where every day I list what I do for the day. So <clears throat> for instance, Monday, I posted a certain uh, Facebook page because they have business posts allowed on Mondays. And then I uh, check in with new students and I ask how they're doing. And then I, you know, double check over tuition payments. And I just have a whole list of every day I do X, Y, Z, like Tuesdays. I send emails to ask for uh, reviews on my Google business page because I know how important those Google business reviews are. So something like that to really keep you organized so you're not just swimming or what I should be doing each day. I wish I would have made that earlier. But it's only been like two and a half months since I quit my full-time job. Wow. So I don't know if I'm far enough out to be able to tell you okay. what I wish I would have done other than those two things. Sure. I get that. <laughs> I think even what you said right there just kind of speaks to the fact that, okay, so yeah, maybe there isn't as much perspective on what you would have done differently, but obviously what you've done really, really <laughs> worked. So 
again, just have to congratulate you on that. And I think this, maybe in closing, I would just say this highlights, to me, this highlights the most important thing of all. And I think this is where, and I'm going to point to myself first, this is where I got it twisted, and this is where I think a lot of people get it twisted. It's not so much what you know, the quality level of like what you're producing. Those are important. But had she not just fully committed to this, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be talking to her right now. We wouldn't be posting this on YouTube um, and, and other platforms. And so I just think, uh, you know, yes, be knowledgeable, that sort of thing. But it's about that tenacity. And every time I meet someone, and you were a perfect example of this when you were going through the training. Every time I meet someone who just will not quit, they just won't say no, they will find a way to make it work. They don't stop when maybe something doesn't work the first time or the third time or the fifth time. They just keep going. Those people just can't be stopped. And so that is, I think, the larger um, lesson to take away from all this. And it's why I've long been a proponent of, yes, educate yourself in marketing. Yes, educate yourself in business, that sort of thing. But that isn't the only game in town. The deeper game being played and why I have been such a huge proponent of coaching and I've you know, had coaches for years and years and years is that I want to go below the surface and say, hey, what's the thing that truly drives success long term? It's so much more than just the information layer. It's so much more than just knowledge. It's how am I performing? Where where do I have blind spots and things of that nature? And and I just, yeah, I just think this is yet another example of of where, um, you know, you just you said there is no plan B. It's so funny. I had another really successful client on the podcast back at um, the end of October. She said the exact same words about um, uh, uh, something that a new part of her business is that she started this year. She literally said those words, there is no plan B. And you said it too. And I just think, man, there is th there's something that connects all these people I know who just get stuff done and it's that. And I think that's that's the secret. That's the magic. So any, any last words, Margie, before we sign off? I think if I can do it, anybody can do it. The energy and effort you spend doing all of these things you know it's like if you don't want the alternative which for me you know I'm, I'm not going to go back to the job I had I don't want to go get a different job like I don't want to burn through all my savings like those not doing those things outweighs like I've got to make this work because this is all I have so you know I think if I was teaching full time and building my studio, I probably wouldn't want it as bad because I've got this comfortable income coming in. But when everything is tied to your success and you're building it, you just kind of put everything into it so you are successful because there isn't an alternative. Sure. Cool. So I think anybody can do it if I can do it. <laughs>